So, recently I read Anime History, 2nd Edition, by Jonathan Clements, as part of looking for some more non-fiction to read that might further improve the critical knowledge I'm taking in for the Anime Explorations podcast. Mainly looking here for stuff like, okay, there is a massive body of work about film criticism of all stripes. You have film magazines going back decades almost but sadly not yet a full century yet but you have a tremendous body of work of film criticism you have well like some of the greatest luminaries in cinema um like of for example the french new wave with godard and truffaut who got their start as critics for French film magazines, and then in turn would go on to become directors. But it is not something that we have necessarily in Japan for Japanese animation in the same way. And while there are, there is a critical body of work in film studies of anime or anime studies, I should say with works like the, book and review I'm discussing today, Anime of History, or stuff like the Anime Encyclopedia by Helen McCarthy and, uh, and so forth. Those, it is a more limited body of work. You have the um, Mechadamia um, Journal uh, for film studies of Japanese animation. But by contrast, like when Sight and Sound ran a article and review of Suzume, they brought in staff from anime news network to basically do an abcs of anime to get across to the cinephile viewers of or readers of the magazine what anime is which is weird and odd and somewhat distressing and also speaks volumes as to the lack of appreciation of Japanese animation as a artistic medium in the West. So I it's me looking for reading material, more stuff to what 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 is out there. Find out what there what exists for further reading. And well, I would say that this is a very like, this was a good choice of mine to pick. Um Probably one of the most impressive things about anime history is how spectacularly comprehensive it is in terms of being a primer of Japanese animation as a whole broad artistic medium. It goes all the way back to some of the earliest days of animation on film in Japan, which in turn goes like the earliest days of anim of film in Japan. It gets all the, all the way to the particulars of various works, what we know about them, and also why they are almost all lost media. It's related to not only just to the usual not caring about properly archiving low art at a time when the artistic merits of the medium are still in question, something that all artistic mediums are sadly um, have to deal with. See also the massive swath of silent film that is also gone um and also with the whole you know japan got heavily firebombed by the united states during the second world war multiple firebombing campaigns film is spectacularly flammable and especially when you're using cheaper stock because wartime or because the studios are buying using the, the nicer stock for the live action films. And this leads to a situation where you, there's a lot of work that you just gone. Fortunately, one of the things the book um, is able to, to do find through their, through Clements's research is because the tail end of the Taisho period, which is when a lot of these films were coming out, and anime works come out was not to put too fine a point on it, teetering on the edge of a descent into fascism during um, in the lead up to the Second World War and the start of the Showa period. 
that there was that anim film and animated films in particular were subjected to heavy censorship. And one of the things that comes with proto fascist states and heavy censorship of artistic expression is a lot of documentation. You document this, the, the people in charge of censoring document the crap out of what they censored and why they censored it. And in some cases, if a work is resubmitted, whether it was approved or not, and which, whether the necessary changes were made. And so while we're missing a lot of film, we get discussion. We have discussion and descriptions of proto fat of a proto socialist or um, just straight up socialist uh, works of cinema of animated cinema that are presented um, that we are no longer surviving because of the censorship boards, the censorship bureaus describing why these works are censored, why they're banned, what changes they are requiring them to be unbanned, and whether the creators or the studios who made who released these works made those changes or not. And so it's it's nice having this level of documentation in a way that we sort of similarly have with some of the lost episodes of Doctor Who where we have snippets of portions of various episodes that we get because of censorship boards in Australia, for example. Um, though in this case, this is more, again, brought on by Japan's descent into fascism leading into the Second World War. In turn, when the war ends and we have the Japanese occupation reconstruction, but then also get a documentation of how the nascent post-war animation industry came about and what and how it went from film animation to television and what that structure came came to be as it was being more or less assembled almost out of whole cloth. And in turn, it does a great job of busting the myth that anime sprang fully forth from the head of Osama Tezuka, like Athena from the head of Zeus, with serious documentation on how Tezuka's production and sponsorship model came about, what was there before, how others reacted to it, and that he wasn't the only one doing it, not even the slightest. This also, in turn, provides some really solid context to that whole anime is a mistake meme that we get with the clip of Hayao Miyazaki, where when anim anime is introduced as a term, it is referring to what we were now call the Tezuka model, the sponsor and weekly or daily show production model, where the whole lot of cutting of quarters to get the show out week to week or day to day. Um, and it makes sense. And in terms of why Miyazaki with his artistic visions, vision of how anime should be made, not just in terms of how a particular work, but how animation as an entire medium should be done as a broad whole. Um, not quite like at a dogma 85 level, but like a, in the sense of a, um, in terms of the minimalist, but in the sense of the, the total creative control of the, of the director with the, um, key animators and animation directors and so forth serving somewhat as the, as the orchestra to the combined composer and conductor that is the director. It helps get a sense of that Miyazaki, if you don't want to go diving through all of the Miyazaki's diaries and collected essays that have been translated into English and published, it gets across his sense of that his view of animation is a art form without compromise not to the director's vision, not to the influence of sponsors, not to the need to meet a TV schedule, not to get, not by, like, even by having, by the requirement to get the film into theaters by a particular date. The film is done when it's done and not one second for, before. Even if Miyazaki, in fact, has had to, in the past, succumb to the need to making a deadline for um, the film to get it out in theaters. Now, this book was published before the boy and the heron hit theaters 
unannounced in Japan, but within the limits of its discussion of Miyazaki by the time I finished it, I completely understood why Miyazaki would release a movie with absolutely no notice, like Beyonce dropping an album on a digital storefronts. And in turn, also, I completely understand why Miyazaki, after Tezuka died, while his contemporaries, I think even Takahata, eulogized him as someone who was a powerful and commanding force of the industry, basically wrote the diplomatic equivalent of rest in piss in terms of condemning Hezekiah as a blight on the on anime and animation as a whole, if not Japanese film as a whole. And like the book as even gets into like Miyazaki, who I'll remind you, did a manga of Nausicaa, the Valley of the Wind to promote the film that continued well past after the film was um, in the can and released to theaters, condemning manga as it encourages people to m be able to make the leaps in interpretation and a viewing of a film to accept um, the gaps and cuts um, and short, well, like there was some cuts and ed instead of edits, but also cuts and shortcuts necessary to make a work animation. So there's like there's that. It really, like, if you didn't think Miyazaki was curmudgeon before, this this emphasizes that. Where I think the book stumbles is the cases where the book runs into other topics that honestly can make other books entirely on their own, like the feedback loop of how fan culture feeds into anime and then feeds into fan back in the fan culture anime works we get fan works and the fans who create those work fan works become creators themselves like clamp and gynax and studio new we get a bit of this in passing like this introducing studio new as coming out of science fiction fandom at a time where japanese science fiction fandom did not consider or accept animation as something that could be science fiction no matter what the content of the work itself was before in turn, Nui would co-create some of the biggest science fiction anime franchises of all time, contributing to even like doing the Robotech, contributing even a little bit before that to like some like members of Studio Nui working on mechanical design for Gundam and that sort of thing. So like there's that Oz like, whole thing there. Or like Clamp starting out as a Dojin Circle creating fan works in turn creating their own series, which then beget fan works by other artists and and writers who will eventually, some of whom likely will eventually in turn on their own become published manga authors and so on. In all, considering the ways that anime criticism, particularly in the West and English, doesn't have the same body of work behind it that film criticism the whole does anime a history does a service of spectacularly good jumping on point for fans who want to take their anime fandom more seriously i do strongly recommend picking it up it is a very large book so i would recommend picking it up through a digital storefront but whichever way works for you definitely worth worth your time Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.